Spoliarium. Its subject has been written about many times over. The figures of bloodied and beaten gladiators being dragged into the basement of the Roman Colosseum. The penmanship is clearly that of Luna. From the unhesitating block letters that spell out the title of the artwork and the artist's name, to the distinctive manner in which the R preceding the year 1883 echoes the manner in which the R in Roma is inscribed on other known works by Luna painted in that city. Here, we see the most tantalizing detail of the bocetto, free Spanish syllabary or baybayin, which spell the word bulan, the Ilocano word for moon. It is the artist's indigenized signature, Luna, the moon. How then did the bocetto of the greatest artistic treasure of the Philippines come into the hands of this European collector? To solve this mystery, in mid-2018, I traveled to the location of the painting. In the pantheon of Philippine artists, one Luna in Novicio sits at the pinnacle because of one work, Spoliarium. Its subject has been written about many times over. The figures of bloodied and beaten gladiators being dragged into the basement of the Roman Colosseum, where they will be stripped of their weapons and armor, flanked by leering and jeering onlookers angling for spoils. To the right, in this dimly lit space amidst the carnage and din, a woman sits alone, bundled in grief. The victory of Luna's Spoliarium, winning a first-class medal at the 1884 Exposición Nacional de Bellas Artes in Madrid, together with a second-class medal for Félix Resurrección Hidalgo's Virgenes Cristianas Expuestas al Populacho, were interpreted as shining exemplars of Filipino genius, matching and surpassing their Spanish colonial masters. So much is known about the nation's most cherished painting. But what about the time of its conception? That seminal period when the artist began synthesizing years of academic training and thinking about that pathos-filled scene set in ancient Rome, when staccato swaths and frothy impastos of oil paint first came together to conjure up that scene of utter grief and harrowing grandeur. The answers to the questions about the origins of Luna's magisterial painting are now, at last, starting to be revealed with the emergence of what may be considered to be the most important Philippine art discovery in recent time the bocetto or prelude for Spoliarium. In early 2018, a private European collector contacted Salsad Auctions, sending detailed images of an oil on canvas that was clearly inscribed as a bocetto of Luna's most famous painting. Among its many fascinating details, the most revelatory aspect that roused my interest was this inscription on the lower hand corner of the painting. The penmanship is clearly that of Luna. From the unhesitating block letters that spell out the title of the artwork and the artist's name, to the distinctive manner in which the R preceding the year 1883 echoes the manner in which the R in Roma is inscribed on other known works by Luna painted in that city. Here, we see the most tantalizing detail of the bocetto, pre-Spanish syllabary or baybayin, which spell the word bulan, the Ilocano word for moon. It is the artist's indigenized signature, Luna, the moon. How then did the bocetto of the greatest artistic treasure of the Philippines come into the hands of this European collector? 
To solve this mystery, in mid-2018, I traveled to the location of the painting, where a surprising thread of historic and personal connections revealed even more startling discoveries. As I was ushered into the owner's sitting room, I laid eyes upon another wondrous jewel, an oil on canvas by Felix Resurrección Hidalgo depicting a female artist holding an easel. The gossamer lines, wispy palette, and misty, dreamlike atmosphere, undeniably that of Luna's rival and compatriot. Intrigued, I followed the trail of the ancestors of this collector to the town of Saria in the province of Lugo, northern Spain. Here, I learned that both paintings came from the Castinera family, whose patriarch, Don Jose Vázquez Castinera, had been mayor of Saria in 1890. At some stage, he came into the possession of his son, Don Francisco Vázquez Galloso, and upon his demise, ownership was then transferred to his wife, who, being childless, bequeathed the Spoliarium Boceto and the Hidalgo painting to the current owner. This information led to an even greater and more pressing question. How did the Castinera family come to possess these two artworks at the end of the 19th century? The investigation took us to the heart of Saria, to the home of the Castinera family on Rua Mayor. Here, a connection was made to Luna and Hidalgo. Right in front of the house was the birthplace of wealthy businessman Don Matias Lopez, who in 1889 was appointed as the commissioner of the Spanish Pavilion at the Universal Exposition in Paris. In various newspapers at the time, the names of Matias Lopez, Luna, and Hidalgo, who presented their artworks alongside other Spanish artists, at that 1889 World's Fair appeared together. It's not difficult to conjecture from this proximity and association that Lopez could have directly acquired the paintings from the artists, both having studios in Paris. Matias Lopez maintained his residence in Saria, and it is presumed that, after he acquired the paintings of Luna and Hidalgo, these were brought there. Until his death in 1891, during which period Jose Castinera was the town mayor, Don Matias was involved in many civic projects in his hometown. Both men occupied the highest positions in Saria and would have had a political and social relationship, appearing together in newspapers from that time in addition to being next-door neighbors. It is highly likely that the transfer of ownership of the Luna Boceto as well as the Hidalgo was made during this period. There is an interesting twist to this story. Luna returned to Madrid in 1893 where he curated the Philippine showcase at the Museo Arqueológico. Among the objects listed in the exhibition catalog were Luna's own works of art that included, and I quote, the Boceto of Spoliario and Hidalgo's La Pintura indisputable proof of the existence of both works. Even more astonishing was finding a photograph taken at the exhibition which shows what appears to be the Hidalgo painting. This evidence raises a possible lead in the Boceto's provenance, that the works in the 1893 exhibition were loaned by Luna from either the Matias Lopez heirs who had homes both in Madrid and Saria, or from the Castinera family in Saria, or that Luna brought both paintings back with him from Paris, whereupon they were purchased by the Lopez heirs, who would later bring the artworks back to Saria and later transferred ownership to the Castineras. Given the evidence that we have compiled, it is the opinion of Salcedo Auctions that Boceto for Spoliarium is an original and authentic work by the country's greatest artist, Juan Luna y Novicio, a long-lost treasure that has finally returned to the Philippines. <laughs>